Hey everyone, Connor here from CameraStore.com, joined as usual by Nico. And today we have uh, sort of a video version of an article that we published recently covering the Horizon Swing Lens Panorama Camera. So we're just going to go over some experiences we had just shooting a roll of it around the office, uh, talk about the results, and just talk about this really, really unique camera. Um, it yeah. works very differently from pretty much any other camera that we have used. Yeah, and this comes because we made a short video, vertical video, that covered a bit of the use at the office, but we had a lot more we wanted to say, so we decided to throw in the YouTube longer form video. So, it, the Horizon camera, and we have a wide looks here, are like Connor said, a swing lens panoramic camera, which means that it's not taking like a big chunk of a picture in its panoramic format, but it's swinging the lens and at the same time exposing film slowly, like a slit at a time. And what that creates is really interesting results. You could I'm just, you go ahead. <laughs> and you can see it go back. It, basically, as I advance the film, the lens goes like this. And then when I fire it, you'll see it shoots back the other way. So yeah, I, yeah. as Nico was explaining, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so first of all, when we decided to make a reel about this camera, it was mostly because it's kind of unique. And we wanted to test a few things from it. As a swing lens camera, you can do cool things like taking two portraits of the same person on the same piece of film. Yeah. And the way it works is the, the lens work, moves so slow, like I just did on the eighth of a second, that you can like put the person on this angle of the camera. And then when it's exposing, move the camera basically 90 degrees, something like that, and leave the person on the other side. And mm -hmm. the idea was to replicate what Jeff Bridges did with the wide looks. That's why we also have a wide looks yeah. here and do like a sad and happy faces in the same piece of film. And it yeah. didn't fully work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think we were a little too impatient. No, um, it's, it's the kind of thing that it's really difficult when you're taking the picture because you can't see the lens. So basically you can't tell where the lens is and it, you know, it's our first time doing it. So with remarkable consistency, we messed up the first portrait. Yeah. Um, it's like, I was pretty impressed with like, how Despite consistent. multiple people taking the pictures, like yeah. you took a few. Did I you took take, one. Yeah. You I took, took another few, one. Thomas took another. Thomas took a few, and yeah, they're just we all messed it up exactly the same way, which yeah. is pretty funny. But um, if we had another go, I think we would probably. Yeah, get we it probably right. would get it right. <laughs> so one thing that I, I would like to mention, we didn't get to mention on the on you did in the article, but we didn't on the on the short is the way you load this film is really funky, yeah. in the sense that the film has to go through like a roller, then the the back pressure plate per se is not really a pressure plate. It's kind of like a half drum, like uh, the other side of the lens drum in yeah. a way. And then it has to be spooled. It feels really strange when you're winding it because it did look really loose when you mm -hmm. loaded it. And um, I, I just find it really interesting to shoot. So one thing that we did mention in the article, but we didn't really put in the shorts is this camera loves being leveled. Yes. The moment you turn this camera downwards or upwards, it will make kind of like that tiny planet horizon thing, Yeah. which we didn't test in this in this video per se, but we do know it does that. And you can actually mm -hmm. notice in a few of the pictures of the office that the windows do a little bit of that. Yeah. Um, mostly probably because they're a little lower than the line of the window. You have to be like exactly at the level of something straight to, it, to preserve the straight line. This horizon uh, we can mention because the wide looks has three shutter speeds. This horizon has actually six shutter speeds. Aperture from 2.8 to f16 and then uh, six shutter speeds. Uh, a half a second, a fourth of a second, eighth of a second, sixtieth, one twenty fifth, and two fifty. Yeah. And if you're trying to do the creative stuff, I would recommend an eighth to a fourth. It's yeah. very slow. Yeah, the the eighth was a great speed for what we were doing with the twisting of the lens. Um, and it was still sharp enough that, you know, if you tell a subject to stay still, they'll be sharp, yeah. um, even probably handheld. Yeah, and as I'm mentioning sharpness, these lenses are pre-focused at a fixed focus distance yeah. and you can only gain depth of field by stopping down the lens. Yep. So in the case of the examples we did with a double portraiture and even your crab walk, which was actually very fun. One. We kept it at 
one eighth f16 on purpose mm -hmm. so that way we would be in focus at the distance we were yeah because we were pretty close yeah i mean we have um in the article and i guess we can throw it up here too if we want um the depth of field versus minimum focus distance if you're shooting at f2.8 or f4 the subject has to be like it was like six meters away or something something that made it unmanageable to do in our studio so we sort of needed um that f16 aperture in order to just have the good working distance. Yeah, and the good thing about the, sh the slow shutter speeds, because you mentioned it in the short, and we I think you mentioned it in the article too, is when you shoot at 1 8th or 1 4th or 1 half, which might sound, for anybody shooting traditional cameras, if you try to shoot half a second on a Hasselblad or a Nikon FM3, uh, you're gonna have issues with you know your like shutter slap and your hands shaking, but this, because it is exposing every piece of film to one eighth, it actually takes like four seconds to go yeah. all the way around. And if you're doing half a second, I won't do it because it will take forever. It will take like seven to yeah. eight seconds really to do the whole time. thing. Yeah. So you can hand hold the camera with these very, very slow shutter speeds and still get very interesting results mm -hmm. and sharp enough. I don't think they're known to be the sharpest cameras no. in the world, but it is a very creative and fun camera to shoot. Um, and it is what they mentioned to be true panoramic because it is yeah. doing the panoramic swing as in X-Pans or Linhoff Technica 617 is just shooting a huge circle and cropping a panoramic look yeah, of it. Yeah, it's true. I mean, the, the, the X-Pan gets all the, all the praise for being a true panoramic camera, but really it's just like a medium, medium format, format lens yeah. that just is in a 35 millimeter body. And that's why the Hasselblad has a 45 mil f4 because it is basically a medium format camera and I must actually check what this is I'm curious so this is a 28 mil 2.8 and this oh, one I lens. think is also 26 if I'm not mistaken so they are theoretically wide yep, lenses but again because it's moving that turret one thing you have to prevent for example is holding the camera with both your hands yeah you have to kind of hold it like this so I find it Interesting. Yeah. I shoot it like this. Yeah, it was definitely more comfortable on a tripod. I think the the wide lux does a better job because it has this like ultra wide angle with the arrows, arrows. on the, the drum in the front that tell you that hey, if your if your fingers cross these lines, they're in the shot. So yeah. even holding it like this, they're in the shot. Yeah. Which and if, yeah. If you are going to shoot one of these, because I've this wide lux is actually mine. The best thing I've found is don't look so much through the viewfinder. Well, this one has a bubble in the viewfinder, which the Wilux doesn't, but check yeah. the viewfinder, uh, the bubble, because keeping it level will make pictures much better than keeping it like accurate to this, to the, how wide it is, because it is very similar to the human like width of your eyes. Mm -hmm. So you kind of can tell from a distance what will be in frame and what won't, but the bubble will really keep those images not looking very funky. And I've shot, a ton of it with this and it got really good results the moment it's leveled mm. but i've never had a problem where nothing is in frame because i didn't look through the viewfinder oh well, that's true you're getting a lot in frame and even the viewfinders on here are not like they don't fully capture the width of these photos like yeah. it's, it's would be pretty crazy to make a viewfinder that did but yeah we wanted to make a video just to explain how this works the quirks one thing we did notice on this horizon is that it leaks light through the lens Mm. not through the back it doesn't have light seals per se it actually uses like a light like path that won't let light leak yeah. through the back yeah. but the lens somehow has an issue where it does create a little bit of a light leak on yeah. the corner and we'll throw in an image to show you yeah and um if you want to test them you can't really use traditional testing equipment mm -hmm. so the best way to test these cameras is throw a roll of film into it point at a white wall and shoot at whatever slowish speeds or if you can all speeds yeah. and if you notice an inconsistency in the um what is it called density yeah. of the film or the picture that means it has some issue yeah. the only problem is they're not fully easy to repair because they're mm -hmm. very mechanical so if something is maybe one of the teeth and the pinions is slightly worn it's not like you can go ahead and find another one and put it in but if you want to check how that works you can test it like that and make sure it's working accordingly and if you can find somewhere to service it, I know there's still people doing the wide lux. Yeah, well, and they're, you know, attempting to bring them back. And, yeah. and that probably comes with a suite of repair tools and, yeah. and maybe technicians available to do it. Yeah, I have heard that these are 
a little tricky to repair in that they require a very specific balance of being clean and being lubricated in order to get the shutter speeds correct. Yeah. Well, our mechanics actually told me that if you over lubricate it, your shutter speeds are going to be way too fast. Yeah. So it's like you have to strike a balance there. And I do think that these cameras come at the fun factor is high enough that I wouldn't mind inconsistencies. So like if my camera starts doing some uneven exposures, I'm not too worried about it. Or this one had a little bit of a light leak, didn't worry too much about it. Because yeah. it is very creative. So I would be able to fix it in the dark room or in, in post after. Hmm. So I recommend these as a very, very fun, creative outlet yeah. to take pictures that you traditionally don't do. And it kind of warps the way reality is mm -hmm. in a way. Um, but yeah. I just wanted to, we wanted to make this video explaining a little bit how the Horizon 202 works. Mm -hmm. This one we have at the store currently. Obviously, by the time you watch the video, it might be gone. But you can check to see if we have any panoramic, true panoramic cameras. I've been Nico with Connor. Thanks for watching. I have no idea if I did that right. <laughs> I might have been too fast in the beginning.